work with high resolution sensors a lot. And for those types of sensors, the limitations in reticle size can affect the pixel size. If you start with a certain pixel size and resolution as a design goal, and that combination is bigger than the reticle size, you're gonna have to rethink one of those parameters. Why is the reticle size important? Well, I think of it as a basic unit of area in a mass set to create an image sensor. You have to fit your pixels, readout, seal ring, pad ring, references, basically everything into that area. Otherwise, you'll have to use stitching, which tends to drive up the NRE costs, the wafer price, and you'll have to remember that it's not available in all the factory processes. Many times we're pushing the limits of what's available in the foundry in terms of reticle size. The foundry seem to have two flavors of reticle size, 32 by 24 millimeters and 22 by 22 millimeters. So the maximum reticle size of 32 by 24 millimeters is a critical number to remember. Resolution is usually defined by the marketplace requirements. So usually what we do is to work with the customer on optimizing pixel size for a given resolution. What pixel sizes can you have in each type of process? For the 0.18 micron node, you can take the pixel size down to 3 microns and maybe a little bit below. At those sizes, uh, the image performance tends to suffer. In the 110 nanometer node, you can take the pixel size down to 1.75 micron. But again, I wouldn't expect great imaging performance at that pixel size. In that node, I would recommend to stay above 2.2 micron pixel size. And in the 65 nanometer node, you can take the pixel size all the way down to 1.5 to 1 micron. My personal opinion is that in each process, there's an optimal pixel size. So when we discuss pixel sizes with our customers, we have to be very careful when that pixel size is too much bigger or too much smaller than a certain optimal value of pixel size in a given process. The problems with smaller pixel sizes are generally better known. You just have a smaller pixel area to absorb photons. You have a certain minimum number of transistors that interconnect that you need to fit into a pixel. And as the pixel size gets smaller and smaller, that leaves very little room for an area to absorb the photons. You also have a much larger angular dependence for the optical rays coming in. We have to take creative measures to reduce the number of transistors in the pixel. Typically, the first thing we have to do is to get rid of the select transistor. And once that's done, we have to add multiple cycles to the pixel readout time to operate the pixel. Smaller pixels also tend to be noisier because there's a smaller area available for the source follower transistor. And to a large extent, the source follower transistor determines the noise performance of the device. And that noise is proportional to its area. The full well also drops. There's only so many electrons you can pack into a given size pin. For example, a 1.5 micron pixel may have a full well of 6,000 electrons, whereas a 5 micron pixel for a DSLR may have a full well of 50 to 60,000 electrons. Now, looking at large pixel sizes, you have a different set of problems. For example, when you have a large pixel, you also have a large photodiode, and you need a certain minimum amount of time to get all the electrons out of a large photodiode. And this makes it difficult to meet the lag requirements. Lastly, conversion gain might be lower for a larger pixel. This tends to be counterintuitive, but it's related to the lag. To help reduce the lag of a pixel, we tend to increase the width of the transfer gate. And that makes the area of the fluid diffusion much larger. But a larger transfer gate means a larger fluid diffusion area, which leads to a larger capacitance and a lower conversion gain. So at Forza, a big part of what we do in creating the specifications with our customers is to optimize the pixel size. 